The man in the image behind me is, I believe, Australia's most dishonest politician. Now, I know this is a big statement because Australian politics abounds with dishonesty, deception and bastardry. We have a federal government which has routinely broken its election promises, including the ones about tax cuts and about taxation or superannuation, and I've been in power less than two years. We have politicians on all sides of the political divide which habitually tell lies in Parliament and in front of the media, as the current federal government did on the issue of implementing the promised tax cuts. I was still lying about that the week before they finally admitted they wouldn't be implementing the tax cuts as promised at the election and repeatedly since then. Now they say we get the politicians we deserve, and in Australia we certainly do because we don't punish the politicians who lie to us. But Adam Bant, the federal leader of Greens, the man behind me, is at another level of dishonesty, I believe. He constantly and consistently misrepresents the housing industry and the people who participate in it in the interest of achieving media profile and presenting himself as the saviour of those who rent. He is, in fact, I believe, the opposite of their saviour. He is their nemesis. If his policies on the rental market were implemented, it would turn the current rental shortage crisis into a catastrophe, with vacancies even lower than the current national average of just 1%, which is already an historically low figure. But Band appears to believe his stance is a vote winner, and he's happy to lie to achieve his goals. Every time he speaks on the issue, he seeks to characterise the average investor as someone who owns six or eight or more properties and is seeking to rip off the tax system in an effort to buy even more. But the official data from the Australian Taxation Office shows that less than 1% of investors own more than five properties. 90% of those who own investment properties own just one or two, of which 72% own only one property. And they're mostly people on average incomes trying to improve their financial situation. They are not, as the Greens leader regularly claims, the wealthy elite of the nation with massive property portfolios ripping off the taxation system. Now, Bant also frequently blames investors for high property prices and poor affordability without presenting any evidence to back up his sweeping statements and ignoring the reality that investors comprise less than 30% of buyers, that most of the people out there competing for dwellings at any point in time, and therefore the ones who are pushing up property prices, are actually home buyers, including first home buyers. Now, there has been a number of independent research studies recently on the major drivers of house, house property prices. And I emphasise that they are genuine research studies, not sweeping statements by attention-seeking minor politicians or people who have a vested interest in the argument that they're presenting. These reports come from the New South Wales Productivity Commission and from the think tank, the Centre for Independent Studies. They both independently concluded that the biggest reason that prices and rents have risen is planning restrictions by politicians and bureaucrats, particularly those that pre prevent greater density of development in existing suburbs. Now, these reports argue that rising prices have been caused by, not by negative gearing or other investor influences, but by planning restrictions, which have prevented a good supply of affordable new dwellings in our major cities. The Greens happily, happily ignore these inconvenient truths, and if Band has his way, investors will be hounded out of existence because property investment would be no longer viable if his policies were implemented. And the issue that political parasites like Adam Band never address is this. If you squash property investors the way he and his cohorts want to, where are the rental properties coming from? New data from Australia's best research analyst, Simon Presley of Propertyology, confirms that there are 3.5 million rental homes in Australia and 3.2 million of them are provided by private mum and dad investors. That's 91.4% of the rental homes supplied by everyday mum and dad investors and only 300,000 rental homes provided by government. Now, if you drum investors out of existence, as this idiot wants to do, there needs to be a plan for how you replace those 3 million homes provided by investors that Greens want to squash. Presumably, they expect state governments to step up and provide all the rental dwellings that the nation needs. And the cost of providing 3.2 million rental homes, conservatively, is $1,300 billion. Can anyone suggest a state or territory government in this country that has a few hundred billion dollars to spare 
to replace what is currently provided by mum and dad investors. Mr. Bant, what's your policy for achieving this? And of course, it's a rhetorical question because I know you don't have one. All you have is a burning and rather unsettling hatred for anyone who owns an investment property.